guy, Hurricane 101 here, and welcome to Pitch It, the show where I take a concept or an idea for a series, such as Naruto, One Piece, Evangelion, a Superman comic, or a DC comic, a Marvel comic, or something along those lines, and I pitch it to you, the audience, with no research done prior to the video. The only research that is done is me making sure if I'm talking about a comic, that that comic book storyline does not already exist. Such as the first episode, which is What if Superman Landed on Themyscira, the only research I did was research to make sure that book hadn't already been written canonically. Or not canonically, but that would have been an Elseworld book, but you know what I mean. Now, before we get into the video, I'd like to quickly apologize for the lack of set. I know I said we were going to be using the green screen and all of that, but I'm actually on vacation at my summer home in Long Island at the moment, and I have a lot of time to record the big pitch it videos, and I'd rather get a couple of these recorded than not get them recorded because I decided to wait until I was back in the city where I have my green screen and the step pieces for the show. So we're winging it on the couch. And yes. So let's get into pitch it. This episode is going to be What If Sasuke won the final fight with Naruto at the end of the series? Um, I am going to be pitching this as a, like, Naruto Elseworlds movie. Basically, if you know DC Comics, Elseworlds is the title they gave to basically What If Books. It's basically me being like, what if we made a movie about What If Sasuke won? Because honestly, I think Naruto, now that it's over, will decide for Boruto, but that doesn't really count. I mean, we can kind of ignore that for this case. Um, now that it's over, you have a lot of room to explore What If scenarios and alternate futures and alternate ways of going about things in the form of movies. And I'm probably going to be doing other Naruto episodes in the future if this show is well received because I really enjoy doing this show about Naruto. But, so this episode is going to be an easy what if Sasuke won. Now let's establish something. This is going to be a, this is probably going to be a movie. Alright, and we're not going to waste any time on the Naruto and Sasuke fight because this is a movie. And everybody that's watching it should know. Like, it would probably be a Naruto movie. Like, we don't waste any time establishing who Naruto is in the last. So we're doing that here. We're not establishing anything. We would just establish right away what's going on. We would have, like, a narration, probably. Like, every story has an alternate outcome. Or something along those lines. Now, the film would open up, probably. I would have to have the film open up. With Sasuke making his declaration that he could kill Bakage, cut to a beautiful shot of them fighting. Probably the Susano Chidori tail beef on Kuramamo class. Then bang, explosion, then we see Sasuke standing over Naruto's body, having become the victor of the fight. And this is where I think things would get interesting, because this movie would be following Sakura and a young boy. And I'll get to Sakura's role, because he's going to play a really big role in this movie. So basically, Sakura and Kakashi would obviously arrive, because Sakura and Kakashi have tremendous faith in Naruto, and are making the assumption that he's going to win. And this is where we get to the part where I'm going to need to defend myself a little bit. Kakashi and Sakura arrive, and they find Naruto dead. I think Kakashi would die here, because I feel like Kakashi would try to stop Sasuke, because I feel like Kakashi would think, well, he's injured. Maybe I can take him. And he can't. But he would try. And he would murder. And Sake would murder Kakashi. Because obviously, Sakura loves Sake. We know, we, the fans of know this. But I don't think he wants to see Sake become the dictator of the planet. Because remember, Sake's plan is to basically become a terrorist dictator. And basically rule the world through fear. And basically be like, you step out of line, I'm gonna nuke you. Like, with nobody is going, like, Sakura and Kakashi want to stop him, right? Like, Naruto failed, they gotta stop Sake, and they're not going to. So I think Sake would take out Kakashi, and I think, and then Sake would, Sake would, would let Sakura go. I think he would, he would probably cut, like, cut off one of her arms, and be like, he would cut off her arm, and be like, 
her right arm and be like, don't cross me. I'm not going to kill you because I like, because I don't actually hate you. Like, because then we get into the whole thing with that Sasuke doesn't hate Naruto and Sakura, but they're in his way. Like, basically what she said to Sakura in part one. I don't hate you in Naruto, but I'm not like you, and I have goals, and you two are annoying pests that are in the way of those goals. So we probably, like, cut off her arm to, like, teach her a lesson, and he'd leave. And then he'd be like, bye, I'm gonna go kill the Kage. Like, I have murdered Naruto and Kakashi, and you're, and you're half dead. Like, you have to remember, like, you think with a full power Sakura, I would say, yeah, a full power Sakura could take post Naruto fight Sasuke. Naruto beat Sa- almost beat Sasuke. He won by a hair. He's half dead. Like she, a, she, she could probably take him if she had full power, but she's in the same boat as him. So he's just naturally already stronger than her. She's weaker than him in general. So the, and they're both in the same really beat up out of chakra state. They're both out of chakra. They're both weak, but he's naturally stronger. So he beats her. He cuts cuts off her arm and he leaves. He goes, he murders Bakages, and he, and he gives, like, a face. He's like, I am now your ruler. He's like, I am Sasuke. I'm a dictator now. Um, you're gonna do what I say, and if you don't, I'm gonna kill you. And I'm gonna rule the world through fear. And that's what's gonna happen, because Sasuke is a psychopath. And Sasuke would then become the dictator of the planet, and declare himself the Hokage. And there would be no Kyushi Kage, no Kade Kage, Kade Kage. Sasuke would just rule the world. It would just be Sasuke, Hokage, God, Dictator, King Guy. And he would be the ruler of the planet. And I liked it. He would, he would kill the tail beast, obviously. And I think it would start off actually working. I think slowly it would just turn into people being really angry. Because Sasuke murdered the Kage. He murdered Naruto. He murdered Kakashi. He's not giving him a choice. He's a dictator. And I think very soon, Naki would fall more into the line of a regular dictator. He would take over the world. He would kill people that disagreed with him. Remember, Naki wants to erase the previous history. So he'd probably create laws like you can't talk about the previous Kage or Naruto. Like you don't learn about them in school. He'd create like fake history. Remember, Naki goal is to erase the past. So Naki gonna have to go full dictator if he wants to actually erase the past. So Naki would erase the past. And he'd be a dictator. He'd kill people who tried to spread... And you tried to spread Hachirama or Naruto's ideals. He'd kill you. And probably kill your family. And he'd just... He'd be a dictator. And so I like to think that Sakura having to survive would escape. And join up with like people that don't like Sake. Like, and a lot of the surviving characters like Kiba, Ino, Gino, Hinata, Sikamaru. But one that didn't go back... And I'm of the opinion that I think Sasuke would have would, would blackmail Hinata into joining him. Because I think Sasuke would want the Hyuga heiress in the Hidden Leaf Village just in case. Due to the connection he knows exists between Hamura and the Hyuga clan. So he would probably, if you remember, he had seen an image of Hamura be, being gifted to him by the snake before. So I do think he would want to keep Hinata around just to be safe. He'd probably want to keep the Hyuga clan around. Which, of course, would come in handy when two years later Toneri does show up. Um, I like to think the stuff with Toneri would be relatively simple. I think he would probably just murder him. Like, I don't think Sasuke... Because Sasuke not going to be distracted by his love for Hinata. Sasuke going to be like, no, no, no. No. Like, I'm God. I'm the ruler of the world. I'm his protector. But remember, Sasuke thinks he's a good guy. So I think Sasuke would just be like, no, and he just kill Toneri. Like, Sake would just murder. Sake would not be like Naruto and let Hinata or any of that get in his way. He would just murder Toneri right off of that, chop his head off. Now, Sake would deal with Toneri pretty, pretty easily, but he may try to look them into investing into the Tentagon. Because he would obviously want to have that as a resource. It's also worth noting that Sake would have access to the past of pain. He would be have the ability to create his own past of pain. Or I guess past of sake in, in this instance. And I guess what he would probably do is. He would probably use Madara. 
Obito, Naruto. I don't think he would use Naruto because the Sasuke likes Naruto. He would probably use Kakashi, Madara, and probably the rest of Bakage. He probably use Bakage, Kakashi, and Madara bodies to fuel his paths of pain, and he used them to like police the world. What he probably do, and basically what would happen is it's not for the people that actually left the village, like the people that were like screw this. I don't care. And for the people that are wondering how he would uh, keep Hinata in the village, probably just threaten Hanabi. Like, Saki's an asshole. I see. I do. Saki, Saki taking over the entire planet and like, ruling it like a dictator. I don't think it would be that far reaching to say he would threaten to kill Hinata's little sister if Hinata didn't comply. And Hinata, despite how much he loves Naruto, does love her family. So I, uh, I, despite how much he would hate Sasuke, I can't see her being like, nah, I'm gonna go join the others in, like, a rebellion. You can kill my family. I can't think Hinata doing that. So Hinata would join Sasuke. And she wouldn't really be a character. She would mostly just be around. She would just be in the village and do what he, he told to keep her family alive. And I don't think Sasuke would, like, make her be a ninja or anything. Sasuke would just be like, I'm keeping my eye on. Because I have a feeling about you, Hyuga, especially you and your sister. Because Toneri was after you, and I don't know, you may be useful, so I'm going to keep my eye on you. Remember, it's also worth noting that Orochimaru is just following Sasuke. Orochimaru's not necessarily a good person, he's just following Sasuke's lead now. So, Sasuke would have access to Orochimaru. And his cloning and his experiment, and he had access to that. So, Sasuke could basically create an army of clones with Shotgun if he really wanted to. I don't think Sasuke would do that, but that is something he could do if he were backed into a corner. Now, what would the story be? Because now we've established kind of like a setting. Sasuke, this is not the setting. We've established the setting. Sasuke rules the world. Sasuke's like the god, emperor, king of all things, evil dickhead guy. So, um, now what happens? Well, Sakura would probably start the sort of rebellion. Like, Sakura would be like, Sakura probably being the strongest person left that knows Sake and knows what's going on. Sakura's the person that is the strongest with the most knowledge. Because Sakura fought against, fought with Sake against Kaguya. So she can kind of figure out how he fights. She knows what he, the tricks that he has up his sleeve. Sakura is the best person to lead this rebellion. Because she's the strongest and most informed person left. So Sakura would start a rebellion. Probably, we would probably have it be named. I'd probably have her name it after Naruto in some way. Because that's the whole point. Is that Naruto ideology was the correct one. And that would kind of be the whole thing people were fighting for. To overthrow Sasuke in Naruto's name. Because, you know, Sasuke killed Naruto. Sakura can name it like... The Naruto Rebellion or something. It would be poetic because Nake murdered him. And then it would focus on a young boy. Basically, the concept I would introduce is that Asura and Indra's reincarnation would change. The way the reincarnation cycle between Asura and Indra, that would change. So it's no longer that Asura and Indra reincarnate together. But Asura is reincarnating again. With the desire to stop Sasuke. So Asura would reincarnate while Indra would not. Because the rivalry needs to continue. But of course Sasuke won. But it wasn't settled. Remember the whole point was that the rivalry needed to be settled. And it wasn't. The brothers feud was never settled. Sasuke just won one battle. One round I guess you could say. Of the legacy of the cycle of brothers. Remember that it doesn't end when one of them wins a fight and kills the other. Because Hashirama killed Madara. He did it. Like, Hashirama and Madara died at different times. But Hashirama did technically, for a second, kill Madara. And the cycle didn't end when Hashirama killed him. That's not how it works. So it needs to be settled. The two brothers need to reconcile. And their chakras need to reconcile. For the cycle to end. And we're not even sure if that's how it works. I mean we don't know. Because Naruto and Sasuke are still alive. So who knows. Maybe the cycle is going to continue forever. But now the reincarnation will get along in canon. I don't know. But in this universe. I'm just assuming it doesn't end until they reconcile. 
or will at least keep going, it will at least definitely keep going until the two brothers reconcile. So, it will, so what will happen is that Ostro will reincarnate into a boy. Ostro will reincarnate into a young boy, and basically the story will be that Sakura dedicated, Sakura knew about the reincarnation cycle. She knew Ostra and the pet Naruto and that that kind of person would reincarnate and somebody like Naruto would show up very much like Avatar the Last Airbender with Katara. There's somebody with the potential to stop Sasuke and basically stop him from being a dictator and ruling the world would appear because she knows that Naruto was the reincarnation of Ostra and she would know how the brother feud works because the stage would probably have told her that. Because Bethesda could also, and if he didn't tell her that in canon, they could always show up, you come back and be like, okay, lady, okay, you are probably the best person for finding this kid. Like, you're the most qualified person. Like, I would ask Kakashi to do it. Because he, he you know, Kakashi and Sakura are, are the ninja that are alive, that have known Naruto the longest, and knew him the best. So they were so, and Kakashi, and most people that knew Naruto longer than Sakura that were ninja, like Uriah and Dunane are dead. Kakashi's dead too. So, and they're like, well, you're not, we're not gonna, and like, yes, you could trust Kiba. Like, but they could go to like, Kiba and Ino. And like, I have a mission for you, Kiba. Go chase your tail and find the reincarnation of Astra. But that would be a really bad idea. So we'd probably get it to like a Jonin level ninja who was competent and knew Naruto well. So we'd go to Sakura and he'd be like, listen, you gotta find this kid. But I feel like Sakura would become, would be very secretive about it. I, it wouldn't really make sense for her to be like, oh yeah, this is my plan to kill the dictator of the planet. I'm gonna find a child that can kill him and then train him. And raise him at my own, at my own, my own protege, child, student thing. Very much kind of like the Jiraiya Naruto relationship. And to kill Sakura. And she's not going to be like open about it. So Sakura, basically it would be established that Sakura, people don't, people listen to her, like the people in the rebellion. She had the title of Six Tokage. Like she were, and you were basically, the rebellion would be, this is my idea for like how the way the rebellion would work. They'd be like, they'd have like a, like a, like a, like a small little town village like, hidden in a mountain and then like and then like there'd be like statues of all the Hokage on east side like fourth through fifth in rows and then in the middle there, and then in the middle of the village inside the mountain there'd be a giant Naruto statue and then there'd be like a plaque but like Nar like Naruto's ninja way on it and then basically it would be established that, uh, they're hidden, like, there's, like, a seal you have to do, and, like, a pack word, and, like, and then a rock will move out of the way, and you'll go in, and there's, like, chakra barriers, and Sakura's done everything she knows about to, to basically Rinnegan proof this place to the best of her ability, but even Sakura's not sure. So, like, there are rules. Like, if you're seen, you don't come back. Because, suddenly, you know, even Sakura's not sure. She, she's kind of just betting on that she that it does work, but she's also betting on the fact that Sake just won't look at it. Like, that your Sake just will never happen to look at this one specific spot in the mountain where the entrance is. Because Sakura's whole thing is if she does, there is the possibility that I'm just not that, not as good as I thought I was, because he has the Renegon, and he will probably see it. So basically, Sakura would be tracking Nick King, and everybody in the village would be questioning her. Everybody in the Rebellion village would be, like, questioning Sakura. Like, okay, like, you are powerful. We believe you. We don't distrust you. Like, you don't want to stop Sake. We all hate Sake. He's a monster now. Like, this, because this is basically my whole thing. My whole belief is that Sake murdering Naruto murdering Makage and becoming an A an A class worldwide dictator where he just murders people who disagree with him and try to express any form of like freedom and study the path would make Doctor be like, okay, Naruto, you're an idiot. Like Naruto was wrong, I was wrong, Saki's a psychopath. <laughs> He's killing people for like looking into the path and doing 
history research. He's killing people who have different ideologies to him. That have like a, a, the ideologies of Naruto and Hashirama. He's a psycho. He's killing kids. Like Sasuke has lost his marbles and, and he needs to die before he kills more people. So Sakura would of course be like, okay, enough. Like, I don't think Sakura would be like, maybe we can say, I feel like Sakura would be, Sakura would, would like, already on that, like, let's kill Sasuke, like, line, like, he was seriously thinking it out, and even attempted it two times, because he joined me at Kaki and wanted to hurt Naruto, and he wanted to hurt her buddy, like, I, I, who knows, like, Sasuke becomes a world-class dictator and murder people, I think he'd be like, okay, that's enough. So she'd be sure to, I don't think people would doubt that she was going to kill Sake, but they may have their doubt of, like, why she's spending all this research searching for some child. Like, why does she disappear all the time, and why does she spend so much time hanging out with small children instead of fighting? I mean, she's trying to look for certain personality traits, and she's trying to look for certain things that would remind her, that would convince her, because there's no way of her knowing. That it went around a child of the reincarnation of Ostra. So she kind of just betting that if she met somebody that was would, that would the reincarnation of Naruto, Hashirama, and Ostra, and she would kind of feel it because she, she, she would kind of bet, like, I knew him. I think I would know if I met his reincarnation. I would hope I would recognize it. It's kind of like how if you've ever seen One Piece, how Shank just kind of knew. That Luffy was a lot like Roger. Like he just, he just knew his captain so well. He just picked up on it. And then he just knows her friend so well. And then she would find the kid. And she'd be like, this is the guy. This is the reincarnation. So then Sakura would find the reincarnation. And then that would be basically. That would be the backstory about the reincarnation. I'm going to call. Uh, I'm going to call him Hachi. For this video. Named after Hachi Rama. But then the kid. Sakura would find him. Let's be honest. He'd be an orphan, like, his parents were killed by Sasuke, his parents, like, you know, still believed in the old system, they continued to champion it, they talked about the Kages and the great villages, so he murdered them because they were, you know, not letting the past be erased, very much like the world government does with the avoid sensory in one piece, if you talk about it, you die. So basically, Sasuke, he's trying to do what the world government did in One Piece, where he's trying to create this thing. He's trying to make it so th this time period before his rule is forgotten forever, and he's trying to wipe out that history. He's trying to wipe it out. It's not getting basically immortal. He talks about in the fight with Naruto how he plans to basically abuse the reincarnation cycle to survive forever. So Sake is basically planning on doing basically what Bagorase do in One Piece, basically living forever and eventually just wiping out history entirely and then just passing a law. Like, you research the time of the Kage, like the Void Era or whatever, or the Mystery Era or the Blank Period Era. You research it, Sake kills you with a kidney. Like, you research it. Your, cat, your town gets a kidney dropped on them, or Sake blows it up when an angel is there, or something. But basically, Sake would find the kid eventually, she'd immediately pick up that he's Naruto, Naruto reincarnation, and then she'd basically take him in. Like, not like a child, but kind of like a Naruto Jirai relationship, but Sakura, like, had the kid live with her, and she would kind of, I like, I would have the story be a pretty dark. Like, Sakura would manipulate the kid. Because basically, it would be like if Jiraiya had that relationship with Naruto. The type of thing. But Jiraiya also knew that Naruto needed to, with a necessity for the world to survive and prosper. So I think Sakura was like, Sakura wouldn't be like an asshole and like hate the kid secretly. But she'd also be like, I love you, live in my house. But she'd actually just be like, well, I need you. So, for it that I, you live with me isn't that I like you. It, it has nothing to do with how I feel about you as a person. It's just that I want to be able to protect you because you're a valuable asset. Sakura would very clearly understand that the child is a valuable asset for the rebellion. So she'd be like, protecting the kid is my main priority. And I don't think she would tell him right away. Like, I don't think they could be like, she's not going to be like, by the way, okay. 
My name's Sakura. Hi, hi. Uh, so you're the reincarnation of Naruto the Maki. Hashira must send you and, and the stage of the past is good son, Ashura. Now let's see, okay. So, the stage had two sons. One of them was named Ashura, and one of them was named Indra. Indra's an asshole. Ashura was a cool dude. Then, they started fighting, and then they died, and then they got reincarnated in Madara and Hashirama. Madara's an asshole. Hashirama's a cool dude. Then they got reincarnated again into my two teammates, Naruto and Sasuke. Sasuke is the dictator of the planet. He's an asshole. Naruto tried to stop him. Naruto, cool. You're the reincarnated in Naruto. Uh, Sasuke is the most powerful thing to ever live. He's a god. Nobody can challenge him. Like, no one can hold a candle to Sasuke in power, and you have to kill him. Like, Sakura's not gonna be like, no, like, she's not gonna put, like, putting that kind of pressure on a, like, a young boy would, like, destroy their self-confidence. Like, she's not an idiot. She's not gonna tell him that. She, but she's not gonna be the monks from Avatar, the last airbender, and, like, mentally destroy a child that has that much of an important role to play in the world. She's going to make it work. So she take the kid back to the uh, rebellion village thing, and she'd teach him, and... Mainly the content I would have here was that Sakura, after she escaped from Sake, before she started the rebellion, found a scroll. She found... She, she, she basically either she figured out how to do it. It could be any reason. It could be she found the scroll. Honestly, I'd probably just say Naruto did it. Like, when you see... I'd probably just be excuse like, you see Naruto do a thing on a thousand times, you figure out how to do it. Like... Seriously, Jesus Christ, Naruto will use that thing every five minutes. I've seen him use it to cool himself off when it's... Like, he will... He, 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 Naruto probably had used Rasengan as, like, a fan before. Like, oh, I'm hot, Rasengan. Like, Naruto fans that crap like crazy. It would be very easy to write it off. And Sakura just figured it out. Because he's not an idiot. And when you say something... Two billion, billion times, the amount of times Naruto did it. You just kind of get it. So Sakura would teach the kids, like, Rasengan. She'd get him the, and she'd, like, dig up and find. she basically teach him Naruto's technique. And the whole, uh, and her whole arc, and it would be her arc in the book, which would be um, about, you know, realizing that the kid Hashi is his own person and that she shouldn't. Try to like mold him into it. It's everybody that knows. Like, Chikamaru would be like, the kid isn't Naruto. That would be her whole arc. would be getting over it. But it's like getting over the fact that that world that Naruto talked about, and that dream, that, that, that kind of, that kind of like idea, that kind of dream, like, that's just basically the idea would, would be, and it's kind of implied in the actual manga, that at some point between the pain arc and, and the war arc, Sakura really got behind Naruto's whole peace idea. Like, she really got behind it. She was like, this is a good idea. Like, this approach he has is good. It worked. And I think he can make it work. And then her arc would be getting over that, that Naruto is dead. That world isn't... The Boruto universe is, is never going to exist. Like, a universe where the five Kage are buddies and everybody's happy and they're filled and they're perfect... Worldwide peace led by Naruto. That's not going to happen, and she shouldn't try to create circumstances where Naruto can achieve that dream by recreating Naruto in a small child. That would be her being like, you know, that, that it's a, Naruto had a good idea, but he failed. Like he had to accept Naruto's idea was good, but only Naruto could realize that reality, and he failed. That would be the whole arc she had to go through. She's like, you know, she had to learn that. And Hanji's arc would be a very typical hero journey arc. It would be about, you know, growing into his own, trying to figure out how to stop Sake. Should he kill Sake? Because Sakura's also going to be very open. Sakura basically, the one thing she does is that she's like, I'm going to be open with him. But boy, I'll be open with not about him. Once I tell him who is he's the reincarnation of Asura, I'm going to be open with him about Naruto and Sasuke. I'm not going to hide things from him. I'm not going to be like, no, Naruto hated Sasuke. I'm going to be like, no, Naruto and Sasuke was Naruto's best friend and he wanted to save him. 
The idea is that he would struggle with the idea of whether or not he should kill Sasuke because Naruto respected Sasuke so much and saw good in Sasuke. So he basically like, should I kill this guy? Is killing Sasuke the right thing to do? And it would basically be a story probably with a few times. It would either be a... Actually, you know what? This would probably end up being a series very much like Harry Potter where each movie would be like a year or a point in his journey and it would, there would be a lot of time skips because he would... Because he would need to go through a long period of time because we can't have a 12-year-old be Sasuke. That would be ridiculous. So it would be a time skip and... Basically, the big emotional moment of the story would be like, in between all the bullshit, it's not going to kick wood to be close. Like, it would be like a very dry and hard like, relationship, as I said earlier. And then eventually, the boy Hashi would eventually get sick of hiding. He would realize he would want to leave, but I mean, Sakura doesn't let him leave. That's the important thing. Sakura doesn't let him leave the mountain. So, they would, so he eventually, he would. Sneak out when you know, when you know, they have to leave to like go get food. So like Daku, Daku would be like sending a team of hunters out to gather food. He would leave, and this would be ass. This would be deep into the story. This wouldn't be where the story started. Like you know, but he would leave on his own. He would go off by himself, and he would encounter some leaf ninja. And basically, those leaf ninja, leaf ninja, would, would basically could go and they. Con and they, yeah, and they try to kill him. They'd be like, "Oh, you remember the rebellion? But like, kill him for Lord for Lord Zakke." And because remember, this is years later. This is like 10, 15 years after the war. Like a kid had, a Naruto was reincarnated, and a kid grew up to be like 12, 13 years old. I think like thirteen years later. So these are like ninja, like ninja that have grown up with Zakke. And I honestly think Lord Zakke. No, basically, Sake, Sakura would, uh, she, basically they would try to kill him. They're like, tuning, joning, he's a kid, he's getting an ass kiss. And then Sakura shows up. I mean, Sakura, like, obviously, Sakura's not just, Sakura does this to the Kage level shinobi. She's not letting the kid that's gonna save the planet just leave. She knew. Sakura shows up, defenses them easily, but not before Sakura's like, oh. So that's where Sakura is. She's been really annoying with that rebellion. I want to crush the hope for the rebellion. Like, the rebellion needs to be taught they can't rebel against me. I'll kill their strongest fighter. He would show up, and basically the idea would be Sakura would be like, and he'd be like, oh! Oh, it's Asura kid! Oh my god, it's Asura reincarnate! I've been looking for him too! That's where he's been! He's been with you, thanks, Sakura! I'm gonna kill him now! And then Sakura would, of course, be like, no! And Sakura would, you know, fight Sasuke and be... Sakura would fight Sasuke while Astra... Well, not Astra. Hachi escaped, and she would be slaughtered. Like, and Astra would see it. Like, Astra would know that it's his fault. And it would very much be, like, that kind of story. Like, it's his fault, Astra. And it wouldn't be like, a, this isn't your fault. It would be like, you were explicitly told... You can't leave, and you did, because you're the crazy dictator that will kill you on the spot with god power. That, that like, if you leave, you're gonna die, and the world needs you. Sakura gave him that order not to leave, and he did, and then she dies. And so it is his fault. It is the I wouldn't frame it like maybe it's his fault, maybe not. No, like this is that kid's fault. That kid did this. That kid was an idiot, and because of that, his hit master died. So then what I would do, is I would, start, I would start introducing new characters for him. And the one really cool character that I would introduce is Sarada Uchiha. Now we were just thinking, what? Like, the Sarada from Morton? Yes. <laughs> so basically, the idea would be, and this would be like, this would be one of the, like, big, major... Reveal. This could probably be like the biggest reveal in the story. So basically, but basically, the idea would be that after the war, Sakura like wanted to stop Sasuke immediately. She wanted. She didn't want to play the long game right away. Like she didn't want to play the long game when Sakura reincarnated. So she went to the village and she basically grew Sasuke. Like she basically like, 
Oh no, I still love you. I forgive you for killing. Like basically, she's like she basically goes straight as a hockey and just tries to play, but she plays him like a fool. She's like. She basically tricked Nock into believing that she doesn't care. Like, you're like, you're not, that was annoying. I only care if you kill them. With, she kind of tricked them. He falls for it. They, and her plan is kill Sake in his sleep. Like, engage in a relationship and make Sake let a guard down around her. Then one night while they're in bed leaving, stab him through my heart and kill him. Of course, Sake's not an idiot. So while she's gaining in trust, they engage in intercourse and she becomes pregnant. And basically, Sakura, for like two years, Sakura plays the long game, and she's fighting. She's like fighting Sakura, she's trying to fight, she never can. And she had, then she had the kid who they do, who she named Garuda, who is named Garuda. But unlike in canon, Sakura actually, Sakura's faking this, like, care of if this thing with Sakura. Sakura hates Sakura. Sakura is a psychopath that kills that kills family and slaughters people for looking at for doing research and look and being curious about history of the past and for liking the previous Hokage. And for like like thinking Naruto was right. So I guess the main thing Naruto was right he killed their fake them and their entire family. So like Sakura did not like this guy. So when she had the kid, she actually hates the kid. That would be like the big tragedy that like Sakura hates Sake so much for like his horrible acting. And she's like, you know what? I she, she she basically becomes Toby Rama. She's like, you know, I don't you know what? You may be my daughter, but I really hate me, Uchiha. So then Sakura uh, she tried to kill Sake. One day she finally sees an opportunity after she had Sarada. She tried to kill Sake and she failed. Sake, Sake's like, no. Like Sake wakes up and he blocks her. He's like, I'm always aware of everything that's going on. Like I always know, I know what you're doing at all times. I'm Sake. Don't try that crap with me, lady. So then Sakura would then be like, okay. So then they fight a little bit and she leaves. And she's like, well, at least I don't need to be around Sake and Sarada anymore because Uchiha clan members suck. Like, if Sakura basically made the argument that Tobi Rama make, which is basically, what has the Uchiha clan ever done that is good? So Sakura's like, you know what? Let's just pretend Sarada doesn't exist. Screw Sarada. The mainly the concept is that Sarada is, is like, one, Sarada always wondered why her mom hated her. And Sake didn't have it in him. Sake, despite all his evil, how how consumed he is, he still loves his family. And Sake is like Sake loves his kid. And he basically is like, listen, I ha everything I do I have to do, but I won't lie. The reason your mother had nothing to do with us. The reason your mother hates us. Your mother Sakura Haruto was just the leader of the rebellion, and the reason she is, is because I killed our teammate. I killed our teammate, I killed the Kage, I killed everybody she cared about, and I'm a di- And she thinks I'm an asshole, because, because I am. I'm a, di I'm a dictator. Like, no, she doesn't like me. And Sarada basically starts think because she understands Sakura's point of view, she can look at things. She's not brainwashed by Sake. He didn't brainwash her. He gave her both sides of the story. He just told her what happened. Because he didn't have it in him to lie and manipulate his kid. His, so Sarada's like, I think, I think Naruto and Sakura had a boy. Like, you're an asshole. Like, like, this is wrong. Like, you shouldn't be killing children and destroying families. Naruto, Hashirama, do not even. The Hokage, the Hokage, the, the Hokage had a point. The five Hokage and Naruto had a point. They were right. And basically, you know, and basically what happened is that she ends up being in the around, around, like, in the area when, like, she ends up being, actually, this would be, it would be that she ends up having been one of the ninja that found Hachi. She ends up being one of them, and they're like, and then she's, like, two years older than him. Because, you know, Hachi was born, like, four years after the war, Sarada was born, born, like, two. So they're, like, she's, so there's, like, a two-year age difference. 
And basically, the idea here is that Tharada would be like, okay. And Tharada would want to see Stalker would be like, Mom! Like, I'm always going to meet you. And, she's like, and, then, Tha- and then she would, when she realizes her mom, she's like, I'm always going to meet you. And then Sake would show up. Kick her to the side. Like, he'd be like, I would, and this would be the first thing. Th- Sake would be like, don't get in my way, Tharada. Or like, I, I don't want to. And she'd be like, Dad, Mom, let me talk. And Sake would just knock her on conscious. And, and then she gives Sakura a fight, she wakes up and Sakura is dead. And she's like, I finally met my mother and had a chance to try to convince her to not hate me. To try to convince her that I'm not a bad person, that I don't agree with what dad is doing, but what can I do? I'm like, I'm, 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 a, I'm a like 13 year old Genin girl. What am I going to do? He's a god. But I finally had a chance to, to meet my mother. Maybe even go join her. Maybe even go join. Maybe even go join the rebellion. Because you know what? With maybe I do. Maybe I want to get to know my mother. Maybe I don't want my mother to hate me. Maybe maybe I think you're an asshole too. <laughs> and then of course, Sakura dies. Of course, and she eventually wakes up and she's like, you know what? Screw you. And she's the one that helps Hashi get out of there. And then, just it all, of course, revealed to Hashi later on, when he sees her, because then he sees her shotting up. And it revealed this, the, that the pain of seeing her father kill her mother, and realizing, basically, it finally, like, cemented in her head that the reason her mother hates her is the fact that not the horrible person. The reason they're seeing this is not because her parents loved each other, but because Sakura just happened to have a cake while trying to murder her father because her father's a horrible person. Like, everything bad in her life, all her problems, all her, but that her mother hates her. Mother hates her. Like, but nobody, like, she has, there are a lot of people in the world that don't like her father. All the things that are wrong in her life will go back to that their father's a monster. And she's like, you know what? Let's kill Sasuke Uchiha. So Sarada and Hasta, the daughter of Sasuke, and the reincarnation of Naruto team up to, like, kill Sasuke. And then we establish something, something really interesting. And we establish that Sakura always told Hashi about Mount Miyaboku, where he could go, but he doesn't have a contract with the Toad. Because, of course, Sakura didn't have the, the Toad summoning contract. She wasn't able to get it. She taught him Rastengan and the Shadow Clone just doing a must and in all Naruto te- and all the techniques of Naruto that she could do, but she couldn't teach him that. So they just but she told him about two things. She told him about the nine about the Biju. With whatever the same thing about the Biju, but Biju do not die. The Biju come back. That's that's important to remember. The Biju come back. They're a chakra, they can't be killed. So Isozaki would have to continuously be killing them, which he would be doing. So they would have two goals. One, go to Mount Miyaboku and, and, and sign a Toad Summoning contract so Hachi can learn save mode. Two. Two, this, and this is the important one, go to Kastunyu's uh, forest where Kastunyu is from and see what you can find out and see if Kastunyu has any information left by Sakura. We have thought, you know, Sakura may have left somebody behind to got studio to give to Hashi. And then the last one is to find the nine tailed fox, Kurama. That would be the end. And then, you know, so he can be, be basically the hope is that Kurama will allow him now. The hope is that Kurama will help them by letting Hashi become his Jinchuriki. So then maybe he has a fraction of a chance. And then basically the goal would be to find the other, and then drop a theory, drop a story, and you'd have to find the other tail B. The goal is to try to, you couldn't actually, that probably wouldn't work. they probably quickly realize that that wouldn't work, and then Daki would figure out, you know, what was going on. But they, they can just get Kurama, at least he'll have a massive power boost and have a shot. Because then he'll be at the, at the end, he'll be able to act the Biju mode. And remember, this is full Kurama. Remember, because when Naruto would kill that half, the other half of Kurama, go back and they merge and become a full Kurama. Because don't forget, remember that Kurama, half of his chakra was enough to take on all, was enough to take on 
Seven Tail B, with the top of Tail B bomb created by Seven Tail B. Half of the chakra did that. Imagine what the full chakra can do. So basically, it would be like this story of them finding Kurama, mastering safe mode, and then Sarda would have her own. And then you would probably, you know, screw it. Just to be ironic, there'd be a romance between Sarda and Ozzy. It would be ironic, like. The daughter of the dictator, the daughter of stock game, a world renowned dictator, and the reincarnation of the guy, of Naruto who is destined to murder Sock. It's almost like this twist. It's almost like a twisted form of irony in a way that Naruto, the reincarnation, and Sake Kid are the ones to save the world from Sake himself. By working together just like him and Naruto used to. It would almost be poetic. It would be symbolic. And we know how great Naruto. How, how Naruto loved its symbolism. So it would, it would be very symbolic. Very, It would be a nice parallel. And it would basically be them going around. They'd probably gather allies. It would be very much. Now I'm thinking about it. It would be very much. It's a really. It's a really like strange combination of like. Code like the very basic premise of Star Wars, and like like some DC Elseworld books than Avatar: The Last Airbender. It's a really combination of like some really weird thing. Basically, but basically the idea that they travel around the world, they gather a team, they probably end up teaming up with other kids, like some of the other kids that do it. Did. Mirai would probably be a character. Mirai Saratobi. The daughter of uh, Kurunai and Asuma would be a, probably a, per, a pretty a big character who would join them. I'm not sure who else would join them. Oh, probably Shikanai, because Sikamaru and Tamari would definitely never yield to Sake, so they'd probably be part of the rebellion. So Shikanai could join, and it, it could be this like, group of young Shinobi that don't have any villains to, to back them up. You're probably wondering, but who would teach them, right? Like, who would teach the... the, the right now, there's a Rattan team of Genin kids. Who would teach them while they're looking for Mount Miyaboku? You can't just go from Genin to Thane. So who would, who would teach them the basic? Well, they travel to Mount Miyaboku. Well, they travel to find Kurama. And in between the films, when they're the time skip, who would be, like, your Jonin instructor? Kona Hammer. That would be the person who would be, like, they would have all the things that, like, Sakura taught them. Sarada would have, would have been trained by Saki, like she would know Chidori, she would know how to do Tristan and God. And basically, probably part of her art could be much like a Chordoki from My Hero Academia, could be maybe she doesn't like to use her Tristan and God at first. Maybe, maybe, maybe when she, and maybe after Sakura dies, and after she realizes how much she hates, and after she grows to hate Saki in the more than she already did, and she decides to help Haki kill her, maybe she has stopped using it. And maybe she has to learn that like, it's not, it's not her, the shotting gun isn't stock game. No, it's her shotting gun, and that could be her arc. Like, you know, like, learning that she is an independent thing from stock game that had just, that should use her shotting gun because it's her shotting gun, and she should fight with everything she had. Kind of like the Toradoki from My Hero Academia. And then, basically, the idea would be eventually Kodahamaru finds them. And Konohamaru kind of like the Jonin adult guy, and eventually Konohamaru, and eventually you could have Sake kill Konohamaru. Again, it would be Sake or Dodge in the beginning with Kid Hachi and the motivation, and that could be the first act of the story. Then the middle act, like the second act, the middle core of the story would be that basically they get, basically that could be the middle of the story. I'm finishing mean, this entire thing right now. So this, this, we're 53 minutes in, this is probably going to be pretty long. But basically, Chikarai, Starida, Chikarai, Konohamaru, and Hashi, and the rest of their team would basically try to, would basically make it a second, a first attempt. Like, the entire first part of the story is building up to them trying to kill Sake. They go, and they lose really badly, and they only escape because Konohamaru sacrifices himself, and he dies. And maybe they have other Jonin, and like, you know, they go, the entire rebellion, and the rebellion is just destroyed. And that's how the second act would end, like, with Sake basically winning, like, Sake killed all the Jonin in the rebellion, he, he kills Chikamaru, he kills Tamari, he kills 
crew and I, he killed Kiba, he killed, the time, the time for like a handful of people, a handful of people, like 10-10, Kiba maybe, have Lee die instead of Kiba, Kiba, 10-10, Eno, and a handful of adults that are, that just are scattered, like, they, they, the, the Kasi and his team escape. And then it's basically the rest of it is them being like, what are we gonna do? Basically the idea is that they are out of luck, they're stranded, they're screwed, and they're like, how do we beat Sasuke? They're, they've been backed into a corner, and they see the rest of the theory is them trying to figure out how to beat Sasuke. And then eventually, basically what happens is they find a way for Hachi to act as like, Basically, the plane, you know, the mind escape the plane and Naruto met Hagoromo and his parents on that. They find a way for Haki to use that to meet Naruto. And Naruto and Haki talk, and then Naruto gives him his Sith Path Day mode and the chakra of all the other beats you. And Naruto bestows him, and he's like, listen, but he does, the, unlike Naruto, he doesn't get granted uh, the ability, the understanding of all things ability. So he doesn't understand how the power work. So he kind of so he does need to practice with them. But Naruto just gives him the path name mode and all those chakras, and he and his team go and they invade the hidden leaf village. Just them, him and Sasuke fight, and then he defeats Sasuke. And then you're like, well, what does he do now? Like, does Hachi kill Sasuke? No, he doesn't. What Sasuke does is he finds a way to de-grant Chakra. Because remember, Chakra is something that was granted by Hagoromo. So he's figured out a way to remove Sake Chakra and reduce him to just a regular dude. And not even remove his Chakra, actually that's too much like Last Airbender, that's too much me thinking inspiration from that. Uh, he figured out a way to remove everything given to Sake by the stage of the path. So basically take Sasuke and revert him to like a war arc pre god mode Sasuke. And then they just capture him. Because like Sasuke, that Sasuke is a regular dude. Like you can hold that Sasuke in a prison. And they put him in a prison. And like you know nobody. There are, and then there are plenty of people in the world. Because throughout the story people in you know. There are plenty of characters that have surpassed that version of everybody got hockey team could beat War Arc Sasuke easily. The idea that they're all way stronger than War Arc Sasuke, they're all like Madara level, they're all like blind Madara level. Hachi's like Naruto and Sasuke level, and Hachi's like Naruto and Sasuke level. So it's the team is like blind Madara level, and then like Hachi, Naruto, and Sasuke level. So Sasuke at that point not a threat. So he basically, he manages to spare Sasuke in honor of Naruto. And he's like, my sensei would have wanted me to kill you. But for some reason, Naruto wouldn't... I know Naruto wouldn't want you to die. And that's like, too good for you. And he lost Sasuke in a prison. And because you'll get to see your family again. And he lost Sasuke in a prison. And the story ends. And basically then the story ends, you know, and there will be an epilogue and all that, and I don't know how, I have no idea, but they do it really long, so I won't get into, like, how it would end, or how it would, how the, how this would continue. Maybe I'll do a part two, about, like, the, a short, part two, a, a short sequel to this video, if you want, about how this would, uh, affect the, you know, about what this world, the Hachi had created, what the world would be like, now that Sasuke has been taken down, but... Basically, the one thing I will say, and that despite everything, drop a story. At the very end, Sarada would go and she would visit Sasuke. And he would tell her about her uncle, Itachi Uchiha. And that would be how Sasuke. And then at the end, Sasuke would realize. He was like, I can't believe I killed Naruto. So I can't believe I killed Naruto. I can't believe I killed Kakashi. Like, at the end of it all, Sasuke would realize it. He'd been spared, and eventually, maybe near that one, Sarada was to have a TV, and then he'd be like, I want, and he would tell her about her uncle Atashi. And then he'd be like, Can you please? He'd be bigger. He'd look at her, say, He'd look at her, and he'd be like, Listen, you know, I know you hate me, but I'm your father, and you're my, and you haven't, could you please? And then she would kill Sarada. And then, after he'd been in prison for like maybe a year, I'd say, 
he would kill Sasuke. And he, he would kill him, and then it would end with, no, with Sasuke being like, I screwed up. And with Sakura, he would be like, in that time, he'd be a kid again. It would be like when the thing with Obito and Kakashi, where he would meet up and, he, and he'd be, and he'd see Naruto and Sakura. And Naruto would just be like, yeah, I forgive you. He'd be Naruto. He'd be like, I don't, he'd be like, I forgive you. And Sakura would be like, ah, fine. He, he'd, be, he'd be like, are you sorry? And he'd be like, tremendously. And then she for, and then she forget, and they say they, they're sorry. And they, path on or however the afterlife works in Naruto and the last shot would be Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke standing in the afterlife as children again in their part one cell. The last shot of Sasuke at least. Like, but I think the of the book would be Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura. It would be like, the last shot of the movie would be, it would be like a comic book. It would be on, it would be like, the, like a line would divide it. and on, Or like it would be like a, like some sort of a division, maybe like a bright light. And one would be Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura as kids again, standing in the forefront, and then in front of them would be the backs. Would be like Mita, it would be Minato, Kushina, Jiraiya, you know, all of their friends. You know, Sakura's parent could be there, like Sasuke parent, Fugaku and Mikako. Um, Itachi would be there, like, and Itachi and Izumi would be there. Everybody, Jiraiya would be there, but Hokage would be there. And it would just be the three of them and kids looking at that. And then it would cut to Hashi and his team. And Hashi and his family would probably be with Zara and all the thing. And it would be like a series of like eight or ten movies. And it would be like an alternate universe where Sake won the final battle. And that's how I would write a story where Sake killed Naruto. Wow, this ended up being way longer and way more detailed than I wanted it to be, but this was a lot of fun. So I hope you enjoyed the second episode of Pitch It. You can follow me on my social media in the comments down below, which is really just Twitter. Uh, you can also check me out on my vlog channel. If you like what you saw and you want to see more of me, I have a vlog channel which you can check out in the, in the description box down below. It's called Aiden's Life, and you probably saw way back in the beginning of a video in the social media card thing. I'm probably down here, but somewhere around here on screen if this is edited correctly. But then again, I may have problems editing this because this video in a raw format is currently one hour and two minutes. So who knows? But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave it a like. Tell me what you would like to see in another episode of Piss Shit in the comment section down below. And tell me if you would like to see guests on these videos. And if you would like a certain video about a certain topic, tell me if there's anybody you'd like to have as a guest on that video. Or would you like a guest? Did you have any specific guests you want? I can see what I can do, depending on how big of a channel they are. And, if you want to guess but don't know who, let me know and I'll see if I know anybody. But definitely just leave suggestions for, uh, pitch it episodes in the comments section down below. I have a ton, but I do want to be able to break these episodes up with things that you guys suggest. So tell me if you have anything in the, that you want to see in the comments section down below. I'm sorry about the lack of set. But do tell me what you think of the, of, the, of the intro for Piss It and the new format and all of that. I hope you enjoy it all. I'm all out, guys. Have a great day. I'm sorry this is so long, but I had a lot to say. Have a great day, guys.